the politicians say it, the scientists say it, the doctors say it. And so much of what we accept as reality is just an unconscious feel, image, for how things are, based on repetition, in effect. And so if you are told as a small child that Christmas is about the birthday of Jesus, and this continues through, especially if you're in a Christian family, then there's a, a good chance that you will consciously or unconsciously relate Christmas to the birthday of Jesus. But when you look at the background and you look at the evidence, that is nonsense. There's nothing to support that at all. And one of the things that I would suggest that we need to do as a, a human race is to start questioning what we have been led to believe, questioning what we're told, and see if it stands up to scrutiny. No matter if it comes from a, a priest or um, a politician, a scientist, me, anybody. Instead of just accepting things, consciously or unconsciously, check it out, see if it stands up, or see if it makes sense to you, rather than just taking it off the peg, off the shelf, as a fully formed belief system. And questions like, um, why, who, when, how, these simple one-word questions can be devastating to the prevailing perception of, 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 of everything. So when you, um, when you look at Christmas, the idea is that it celebrates the birthday of Jesus, who was born on um, our December the 25th, in a manger in Bethlehem. And that all the things that the biblical story says um, happened. Um, it's interesting that even though um, the New Age mentality kind of dismisses the Christian version of Jesus, they all were all also have their version of, of this figure. It, it, well, it, it didn't exist like that, but it did exist. Well, and does exist, and all these other New Age stories, I think they call him in the New Age, is it Sananda or something like that? And, um, again, it's all just another offshoot of a myth that's gone on for hundreds of years, um, indeed thousands in relation to, to Jesus, and many more in relation to other figures, of which all the basic themes and pillars of the Jesus story were also attributed to long before anyone had ever heard of Jesus. It's a recurring story that is put into different historical settings and given a different name for the deity. So when we look at Christmas and we think it was kind of a relatively modern thing with the trees and the, the gifts and all that. In fact, it goes way back into antiquity, not least to a festival in Rome to their key god Saturn called Saturnalia. And Saturnalia um, was a festival of um, great debauchery which began um, on December the 17th and ran for a week. And during that period, the Romans decorated trees in their homes, they exchanged gifts, they had holly, they had wreaths, and they had mistletoe. And um, a lot more than kissing went on, on under the mistletoe at um, the time of 
Saturnalia. And of course, what happened was that this then was transferred into the Christian belief system. And alongside this Saturnalia was also infused the a deity of Mithra, who was given the birthday in Rome of what has become our December the 25th. It was a midwinter festival. And when you see what the Romans and others said about Mithra, in terms of the background to the deity and the story and all that, it is a mirror of what was later attributed to Jesus. Why? Because in um, 325 um, AD, at the Council of Nicaea, the Roman Emperor Constantine, who worshipped a deity called Sol Invictus, the unconquered son, um, was involved in the creation, basically, of the structure and belief system of what we call Christianity. And there was a transfer from the previous, what we would call pagan deities and belief systems and worship of Rome, to Christianity. And the reason that Romans and others had little um, difficulty with that transfer is because it was the same belief system the same story and it was just given a different if you like cover narrative and went on as before and then as the centuries uh, have passed these former um, pre-Christian pagan festivals, stories, deities, belief systems became accepted purely by repetition, repetition, repetition to be the Christian story unique to Christianity. It, it's not. It wasn't. And so what we call Christmas where so many around the world um, believe that they're celebrating the birthday of uh, Jesus. Um, Christmas and what they're celebrating is really a modern version of Saturnalia in Rome, um, fused in with uh, the worship of pre-Jesus Jesus figures like Mithra, the vine, the only begotten son, all the same um, uh, uh, attributes to the pre-Christian deities um, appeared with the later Jesus. They were just transferred. Well, I don't want to change my religion. Well, we're not changing religion. We're just changing the name of the deity. All right, I can handle that. And what um, happened is that, for instance, um, in ancient Babylon, they had a a trinity of Nimrod, the father god, Tammuz, the son, and they said the father and son were one, for reasons I'll come to, and the third point of the Babylonian trinity was Queen Semiramis, or Ishtar, also known as, very relevantly, Ishtar. And they said that when Nimrod died, he became the sun god Baal and impregnated um, Semiramis, Ishtar, with the rays of the sun to give a virgin birth to Tammuz, the sun. And they said that Tammuz was a an incarnation, a reincarnation of Nimrod, thus father and son were one. And when this belief system 
was transferred to Rome, at least through the movement of people. The Christian version became the Father God, Nimrod, the Son, Jesus, virgin born. And the third point of the Christian trinity was the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost that is symbolised as a dove. And one of the symbols for Semiramis Ishtar in Babylon was the dove. And what the new Christianity, I say new, what the rewritten pagan belief system called Christianity um, then did, was take the attributes of um, what the Babylonians gave to um, Semiramis, which was virgin mother, queen of heaven, etc. And they transferred them to the figure of Mother Mary. Mother Mary is a, another version of Semiramis, the goddess, in so many ways. And in this way, Christianity um, was formed, Christianity was created. And there are many people um, who are Christians today who realise this. And they work their way around it to um, explain away why this can be. Because the historical facts, if you look at them, are facts. So they can't say, oh, it's a load of rubbish. Um, so they have to find a narrative to explain it within still believing in the Christianity that they've always believed in. I mean, there was one um, uh, Christian article about the uh, the real background to Christmas that I was reading this week um, that uh, pointed out that um, this whole thing about Jesus' birthday on December 25th um, is just made up because um, nowhere in the Bible does it um, point out um, when this Jesus figure was supposed to be born. And all this thing about um, shepherds watch their flock by night, um, this article pointed out that there are uh, no flocks by night in midwinter in that area of the world. It's too bloody cold. It pretty much ends around October. But even so, they find a way around it to, to protect the belief system. Um, I, I spoke at a, uh, an event once, a mm, long time ago now, and um, there were quite a few Christians there because it wasn't you know, one of my events. I was a speaker at a big event of multiple subjects. And um, the Christians got around me, some of them did, afterwards because I you know, said some of the things I'm saying now. And um, I pointed out to one of these uh, people, a, a lady, um, what I've just said about the background to Jesus and where it came from, and that there were endless other um, deities before Jesus, of which exactly the same basically was said. And um, she said, that's, that, that's not true, that's not true. And then another Christian guy next to her said, actually it is. So she thought about it for a minute, and she said, well, well it doesn't matter anyway, because the belief system must be protected from all borders and all challenge, no matter what the evidence. And um, I found this um, article this uh, week, um, again, a Christian article, which is accepting the real background to Christmas and where it came from, but, again, doing the mental gymnastics to protect the belief system. And um, it's quite instructive to, um, to read, really. It says... Um, Dear reader, isn't it amazing that no one knows the date of the most important birth in the history of mankind? Well, if it didn't take place, not really, mate. We know the birth dates of many famous ancient men from the Caesars to the Pharaohs, and in fact in Egypt, birthday celebrations can be documented back to the 13th century BC. So if Jesus is real... Um, and the story is real, and the historical setting is real, so why not 
the same with Jesus, uh, as the, the writer points out, uh, or claims is the date of the most important birth in the history of mankind. I think there's more to know. Um, but he says, but there is not a single reference in all 66 books of the Bible and not one mention in early church literature pinpointing the date of Christ's birth. Now, here's the gymnastics coming. Here's the, I'm going to uh, disappear at my own backside and I'm going to take a torch coming. Obviously, God did not want us to know the date Christ was born! Exclamation mark. We must remember that the Son of God pre-existed from eternity with the Father, just like in Babylon. Perhaps for us to affix a date of birth to Christ, who always existed, is to detract from his divinity. One thing is certain, if God wanted the church to celebrate the birth of his son, he would have told us to do so. Uh, reasonable minds, did he just say that? Reasonable minds can only conclude that the reason the Bible is silent on the subject is because it was never God's intention for Christ's birthday to be celebrated. And so you've got Christians who believe the whole story. You've got people like this who see that that whole part of the story is nonsense, but then protect the belief system of Jesus by this sort of thing. And you've got the New Age mentality that dismisses the Jesus story biblically, but, but has, what is it, Sananda, whatever, um, uh, 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 this Christ figure in, in, in New Age belief. Um, it's just different versions of the same uh, belief system download being unable to get across that chasm of understanding that not only is parts of it not true none of it's true it's all just a repeating historical story and narrative and then this finishes, um, however, we do celebrate Christ's death. It is through his death and atoning sacrifice that we are reconciled to God and have forgiveness of sin. Every time we partake of the communion of the bread and cup, we are celebrating the death that purchased our redemption. I won't even start with that. But God didn't want us to celebrate Christ's birthday, so he didn't tell us. Um, and that all came, in fact, from the ancient world, the December the 25th midwinter festival period, which became Christmas, Saturnalia. But God did want us to celebrate his death, kind of a bit perverse. And when, when is his death celebrated? Why do you celebrate someone's death? I don't know. Maybe it's me. Um, when do we celebrate the death of Jesus? Easter. And Easter comes from the very same source that Christmas does. The ancient pre-Christian world. In Babylon, the goddess was known as Queen Semiramis or Ishtar or Ishtar. Ishtar comes from Babylon and uh, the ancient world in general that um, followed a uh, Babylonian type religion. Easter eggs, Babylon. Bunnies, symbol of Semiramis Ishtar, Babylon. Um, hot cross buns come from the pagan world. And so we are constantly 
um, taking on beliefs because of repetition and because of our our location and our family and environment in the sense that if you are born in the Islamic world 